groups, I'm going to get a glass slide ready to hold the sample while we do the FTIR experiment. So we use several glass slides and um, these paper clips to achieve that. We have a um, propellant solution, you can find the one in the glass, and then use a chem wipe to have it just wipe the surface. And this aids in removing the sample after the polarization. Uh, and then we'll be making a small version of the glass mold to accommodate the instrument. So what you'll end up doing is you'll cut it in half. So break it. Cut it in half again. Break it. These will be the two faces. Cut to small edges. So break them. These will be the edges. And then you'll have two spacer ends. Cut that one more straight. Like this, and you'll cut it into three sections. Mm -hmm. So if you'll take two of them that have just been cut like this, so then to assemble it, you'll use three clips. Mm -hmm. You'll take the smooth side that you put the propellant on, have them face each other. So take one of the edges, put it in between, sandwich it together, have it straight aligned. Use one clamp to secure it. Before clamping, you're going to set the spacing with the two small pieces mm -hmm. you cut. Place one on top. Balance it. And take the other. And also put it in place. So you'll have a secure piece. Have it pressed together tight.
tiny piece of glass that on the bottom, you'll have that separate. So put that there for now. Then sample syringe of the two. Uh, 0.3, 0 0.4 millimeters. Take the syringe, hold it sideways, and you'll uh, enter the needle tip, and you'll slowly inject, and you'll get to where there's just almost nothing there. Put the syringe back, go around the glass, and you will fit it in that small section. There might be some leaking that occurs from the glass, but that is okay. Just trying to get to fit into the section. Several times for our purposes. As you can see, there's usually a large air bubble that just came from not getting in quick enough and all turning around moves it there, but it is fine for our demonstration purposes. So you'll take this. The hooks here will hold it on the sample as so. Oh no. Not fitting the tall fill solution. We've got a tiny little air bubble that that's now we can place it here. Uh, you can use your hand to check to see if the laser beam uh, goes through your sample. You'll just look for like the red dot on your glove. your window. Now you're going to collect a sample spectrum of just the sample before you polymerize it. So you'll enter your name, then this one chooses. Uh, this is just a chemical composition solution. Uh, the intensity of the lamps are you measure. So I just put that there. Collect sample, let's say collect when you're ready, go make sure your sample's in, and then if you collect, it'll do those 32 counts again. Pops up the spectrum. Uh, that is before exposure to UV light. Correct. Yeah, so the sample has not been polymerized at all. It is still the monomer. Okay. What we'll be doing is we'll be tracking the peak change. Um, which peak are we going to track, track it? We're going to track this one, which is the vacroid peak. So as the sample polymerizes, this peak will go away as it reacts to mm -hmm. leak to other monomers. So it's this double bond that's going away. Okay. It's around the yeah, 60 region. So what you'll do for this, you'll have this button down here that has the peak area tool. You'll click it, and then you'll click and drag to the other side. So mm -hmm. hold and then drag it. Um, this will be the area, and then you can set your baseline to just align with these, these little triangles. That's yeah, so. Now you'll get ready to do the long-term experiment. You'll go to collect. Mm -hmm. Hit collect series. This is where you'll name. Well, first we're going to have to go to experiment setup mm -hmm. to make sure everything's right. So you're going to have to change this to two now because it's going to be taking samples um, mm -hmm. all half time and you need that to be quick. You'll hit OK. Then you'll go back to experiment setups, go to series, and then this is where you're going to enter the data that you just took. You'll hit edit peak area and you'll enter down these numbers. And this is just the bounds of that peak you just measured. So 6 to 4, 3 coming from here, and 6 to 4, 5 is coming from here. Yes, yeah, so you'll have your region uh, coordinates that go mm -hmm. here, then you'll have your baseline coordinates that come from here. Okay. You'll hit accept, uh, depending on how long you estimate your experiment to be, you can hit uh, edit your time, mm -hmm. and then uh, this should be more than enough time for what we're going to do. You'll hit OK to save these conditions. 
So now you're going to set up the UV lamp. Uh, as needed, you can check and change the intensity with this knob. Mm -hmm. You're changing it, will change your intensity. Uh, this, you'll shine light into it and it can tell you the exact intensity that has been pre uh, measured. So you'll take this end, mm -hmm. hook it up all the way into the instrument as set. Mm -hmm. Then you'll take the other end of the remote lamp. So what intensity you are going to use? Uh, 0.03 watts per centimeter squared. Okay. So you can have it, mm -hmm. the lamp comes here. You'll want to make sure that it's angled to where it will hit your sample. So this could take several tries mm -hmm. to get it right. Um, once you think you have it, you can put it right down. to make sure it's going to actually hit your sample. That is the most important part. Mm -hmm. Hit the sample, you can check it once it's running and there'll mm -hmm. be a shadow in your sample. Okay, that's good. So I'm going to collect, collect series. This is where I'll put your name in, the series. It's save. It'll say press your space ready to collect. And so you'll hit OK. And then let it run for one minute before you turn on the lamp. So mm -hmm. you have um, an idea of where it's starting. So it's going to track the intensity mm -hmm. here. It has this tiny little red bit of high mm -hmm. intensity. So wait a minute for that to go. Uh, just have that in the baseline. It doesn't count in seconds, it counts in one hundredths of a minute, so that's important to keep in mind when you're making sure it goes to one minute before you start your trial. So here, we're ready to go. Okay. What you'll do is you'll take this clamp mm -hmm. and you'll edge it inside the table, as so, sometimes having to adjust the arms to make sure it stays in place. And what you'll do is you'll angle it and then you will press it so that it's there, and then it's going to be easier if I can uh, hold the phone in and show it. Ah, it's a good video. So. Sweet, okay. I'm <laughs> 